Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm going to be talking about the Cabalists in the Grim Dawn expansion, Ashes of Malmoth. So, before I get too deep into this, I would like to say if you like pet builds, and you enjoy running pet builds, a much more durable safe pick is going to be the Conjurer, which is the Shaman Occultist Hybrid. I'll make a whole other separate video discussing the Conjurer and why it's strong and the strengths of that character. Having that said, the Cabalist does have some pretty good strong points that I do like, and I do think some things should change overall for the end game. but as far as I have explored and played, I do enjoy this class, it is a lot of fun, and I'll be talking about the things that I do with this character. So obviously I'm going to go over skills first, I'll go over devotion, and then I'll skim over items. So on the occultist side, I put one point into Curse of Frailty. That's simply because a lot of our damage is not going to be physical and bleed. So you don't really need to worry about putting this too high, in my opinion. Also, on that token, um, there's a lot of skills in these two class combinations that require... <laughs> your points have to spread quite a bit for this. And uh, I just don't feel like maxing this or pushing this up any higher was well worth it. So one point will do just fine. Vulnerability is max because you do drop enemy defensive ability. Obviously, if you don't know, um, defensive ability, if you drop someone's defensive ability, increases your chance to crit and hit them. So you have that for that reason, and then obviously it boosts the damage of poison, acid, vitality, and elemental resistance. One point into summon familiar because you really don't want to put him too high, in my opinion. He's not a great pet. Um, we simply want one point here so we can boost storm spirit. Storm spirit will give you and your party a flat elemental damage increase. It'll also boost percent elemental damage as well as giving 27% elemental resistance. Um, that's pretty substantial, and you will see why the bonus elemental damage is important here in a second. Blood of Dreek, you want to max definitely. This skill is so good. I've seen a lot of videos talk about this skill, and people say that it's great because it gives a 28% health restored, and it you know heals over time, it heals your pets. One thing that is hardly ever mentioned, in my opinion, is the fact that it gives a flat offensive ability increase for you and your party. That is huge for you and your pets, so you definitely want to take this. One point aspect of the Guardian, simply because I have plus the skills to this, and it's one point pushes my poison and acid resist to its cap and ultimate which is really nice as well as providing a little extra damage boost to a lot of my pets summon a hellhound i put it at 18 out of 16 you don't necessarily have to put it at 18 out of 16 in fact a lot of pets you don't have to push above their max limit um, it doesn't really increase your damage all that much something that's great about hellhound and a lot of people don't seem to understand is that blazing death is very very effective do not forget to use blazing death you can pop this summon your hellhound when you resummon him he'll explode do aoe damage it's a huge chunk of aoe damage mind you plus you're getting a lot of elemental damage increase which helps with that fire damage of course and then on top of that you're reducing the enemy's health by 15 percent bosses are highly resistant to that effect but in most situations almost I would say 90% of the time this is going to be effective because you're mostly fighting monsters that aren't going to be affected by that. Hellfire, I put two points here. It gives you a chaos damage increase, fire, uh, percent fire, percent chaos, percent burn, and then a little bit of fire retaliation. This isn't huge. Um, it's just that that flat chaos damage is not bad, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Bonds of Ismail, one point. Honestly, I don't think this is worth pumping beyond one point. This is one point with skills added. Uh... This increase is not going to make your pet survive any better, in my opinion. Your skeletons are going to die regardless. Uh, there's a certain situations where no matter what you do, skeletons get wrecked. So that's just the thing. <laughs> Manipulation, I put that as high as I could. Obviously with the all damage to pets, it's really nice. It's not a unique skill. So you can have that active with other unique skills. For example, you you know, if you had possession and some other unique skill in a tree, you couldn't have them active at the same time. You can only have one. So this is really nice because this is not a unique skill, so you can have it active with others. Um, so that covers this side. Uh, I did take one point in Doombolt. And again, this more or less obviously gives you another percent damage reduction enemy's health for one point. It's really good. And then I have it uh, proc to a skill, Shepherd's Call, which you can see. Gives your pets all damage, crit damage, and retaliation damage. Not bad. On the Necromancer side, I did max Skeletons as high as they could go. Skeletons are actually going to be one of our highest damage dealers. Uh, that would be why I maxed it as high as it could be. Undead Legion. Undead Legion, you don't really need to put this any higher than that's required. So let's say, for example, my summon limit is increased by 5 right now. Let's say the next one increase to your skeleton summon limit is at rank 16 or what, what it, whatever it may be. I, I'm not sure what the number is. But... Um, let's say I can only get it to like 13 or 14. It wouldn't be worth putting the extra points there, obviously, because you're not getting an extra skeleton summoned. So don't even worry about it. I think 12 out of 12 is just good enough. 
Will of the Crypt, same concept here. So with pets or any type of damage in this game, percent increase is always good, but you want flat damage too. Flat damage actually scales really well. So in this ability here, you don't get any flat damage at all. It's just percentages. So 12 out of 12 on this, in my opinion, is just fine with bonuses of skills. Spectral Binding. Uh, I'm kind of torn <laughs> with this skill here. I mean, Spectral Binding is not bad. It's just that I feel like it should be a party buff. I think it should work for you and your pets and your allies. You do get a flat Aether damage out of this, which is not bad based on a Devotion skill I'll be discussing. But I feel like that this should be a party buff. A lot of the classes have some form of boosted health, damage, um, offensive ability, capabilities that buffs the party. And I don't see why Necromancer should be any different. On top of that, Spectral Wrath, which is the add-on, I feel like that this potentially could be really strong if you could provide this to your pets, like I said. This would also give your pets the ability to do retaliation damage, which is Vitality and Aether, which could be really good, uh, obviously because on the Necromancer side, they get a huge boost to Vitality damage. But this also drops enemy attack speed, Vitality resistance, and Aether resistance. So... Like I was saying earlier, skeletons are really kind of weak and, and not very durable. This could kind of help with that and counter that a little bit if it's reducing the enemy's attack speed every time the skeletons get hit and doing a pretty decent amount of return damage. We'll see. Hopefully, Crate will change that. I have 18 out of 16 on Blightfiend. Uh, I absolutely love Blightfiend. A lot of people say this pet is not very good. Um, at least from what I've researched and read. And I disagree. I think he's a fantastic pet. I think... As far as pets go, a lot of his add-on effects are super good because they're static effects. Um, the issue with a lot of the other pets is that they have skills like Infernal Breath or Ember Claw that require them to stop auto-attacking to cast or use an ability. And overall, it's kind of a DPS loss, really, unless you pump a lot of high points into it, which, you know, it's not going to be worth it when you can boost the overall damage of everything versus one skill that does some damage. That's kind of my complaint about that. So with the Blight Fiend, you have Rotting Fumes. This ability is insanely good in my opinion. It does an AoE poison damage, generates threat. Um, with this build, I'll let my pets go in first, let them grab the aggro. Almost always I'm fine and I just start nuking and popping buffs and Curse of Frailty and stuff just drops real quick. You'll see here in a minute. One of the good things about this skill here is the reduced defensive ability. I've even considered somehow putting more points into this. Um, we'll see. Again, it depends on the gear that I have. It also impairs enemies' attacks and range attacks, which is super good. I mean, you have a chance to fumble their range and auto attacks or melee attacks. Blight Burst for one point is insanely good. I love this skill. I think it's really, really good. This guy runs in and he throws an AoE Poison Nova, a 10 meter radius. It's always 10 meter, I believe, at whatever rank, so that's actually pretty good. And then it does, honestly, a decent amount of damage for one point. Obviously, obviously it's at two, but still, you could level this up if you wanted to, potentially do like a Poison Rotting Earth build or something. Um, there's all kinds of crazy things you could probably do with this. But the CC capability, this is nuts. I mean, confuses targets for two seconds. Everything that it hits makes them wander around for two seconds aimlessly on the field. That's a lot of time when it comes to doing damage with your pets. 10 out of 10 on Call of the Grave. Scaling on this isn't too bad. It's just got a pretty long cooldown, but it's in second duration, so it's not too bad. But I don't think you need to go much higher than out of, uh, 10 out of 10 on this. Mark of Torment, I think, is really decent. In fact, I think it's kind of underrated because a Necromancer does not have any damage absorption abilities other than this one, honestly. And then even on top of that, a Cultist doesn't either unless you go with Possession. Obviously, we can't run Possession because Master of Death, because that's a unique aura. So in my opinion, I think that Mark of Torment is really strong. And if you level this up, which I've also considered, you have the ability to boost the damage absorption, boost the damage absorbed reflected, and on top of that, the duration. So it's it's potentially a really good skill. I would like to mess around with this more. So basically, you link your soul with another target. Um, you, let's say like you know 30 or 40 monsters are rushing you, and there's like an ethereal that's kind of beefy that has a lot of health, and you know that. You can throw this on that beefy ethereal, and all the damage that would be dealt to you is reflected to him. And obviously that damage changes based on the skill of this, or the rank of this. So I personally think this is really good. It's kind of like an oh crap, save me button. And if you use it right, it can save your life. Master of Death, to be quite honest, 
Yeah, it's kind of horrible. <laughs> you do get a decent amount of defensive ability out of it, which isn't bad. You get uh, offensive ability, and then you get vitality resistance. But the scaling on this is pretty crappy past 12, and the percent damage increases are really low, in my opinion. They're not anything to write home about, and that's that about that. I mean, it's just... It's mediocre in my opinion. I think it could be a lot better. Personally, I think that it should have vitality and bleed resistance for your pets. I mean, obviously, if you're a necromancer and you're a summoner of death, why the hell would skeletons be weak against bleeding? I mean, it just kind of makes sense to me. So hopefully Crate will change this. That's just my opinion. Um, something that Kabbalah suffers from is bleed and pierce damage. Your pets will get destroyed by it. One point in a Reef Spirit, that's just to proc a skill, and the pet that it summons isn't bad. Alright, so that covers all that. I'm going to zoom out here and just show you guys what I did for Devotion. Um, I put one point here, obviously, to have enough points to grab Dying God. I personally like Dying God, Hungry Void, quite a bit. The issue with this is that you are pretty squishy, and if you don't pay attention, you can die. If you get out of position, you can die. But this boosts your pet damage and crit damage insanely high, as well as giving you some average chaos damage which scales decently with what I was talking about earlier with the Hellhound, the little aura he has. Um, this is damage that's applied to you. So anything you see that's flat damage, that's going to apply to your weapon attack damage. But that's a good thing, and I will discuss it here in a second. But anyway, Dying God gives you some really good abil uh, buffs. You get some Chaos Resist, Defense Ability, Defense Ability. Pets get some huge damage and crit damage. That's really the biggest thing with Hungering Void, is your pet crit damage is out the roof and they will demolish things while this thing is active. And it's also a 20 second duration on a 27.9 scale recharge timer. So it's going to be up a lot <laughs> is kind of what I'm getting at. So to kind of counter some of this loss of HP, Lizard's really good. Gives you health regeneration, 40 health, 10 health regenerated, and then it increases health regeneration by 15% as well, a little bit of health. So that's one thing that I do to kind of counter that. You know, I took Jackal. A lot of these I took for just the points. So Flame Torrent here is super good with skeletons for whatever reason <laughs> there is a reason but anyway your pets get a bonus fire damage increase get some chaos resist more damage increase and then flame torrent if you look at flame torrent it does not have an internal cooldown so your pets can spam this relentlessly that is what makes your skeletons brutal this skill here will make your skeletons just aoe demolish everything it's really good. The Skeletal Knights or the Guardians or whatever they're called, the big beefy guys that have the helmets and the shield and weapon, they do a lot of vitality damage. They're strong as hell. And the reason is because they have an AoE vitality aura that does damage constantly. And I'll show you that here in a second on a test dummy, and you'll see the procs. It's really good, and it scales off of weapon damage as well. So that's why all the average damage is really important. Keep that in mind, guys. Took Ill for some extra defenses and piercers. Took Panther. Um, for the bonus crit and offensive ability for pets, which obviously opened me up to grab the Dying God. I took Wretch instead of Viper. Viper doesn't really provide a whole lot for you, in my opinion. And then this Viper ability. Typically, this probably would be pretty good if this were something that like pets applied, but this is 20% reduced targets, element resistance for 3 seconds. That's if you physically hit them with an attack, from what I understand. So I was like, whatever, don't deal with that. Um... This here gives you average chaos damage, again, and flat acid damage, so this applies to your weapon damage. So you have, this is what I'm trying to get at. You get a lot of bonus chaos damage, and that in turn starts boosting your flame torn even more. It's pretty good. All right, so Shepherd's Crook, obviously for all the bonus damages you get out of that. I took Raven. Um, the Raven is not bad. You get the 6 flat lightning damage for pets, plus a 60% lightning damage increase. This isn't going to be a huge damage increase for your pets, but obviously with all the bonus elemental damage, that is not bad. Took uh, Bismil's Bond. Um, put 3 points into Empty Throne for the extra resistances for pets. Pierce being one of them. That's how I got the 18 Pierce resists for pets. And that's the other 10. 4 into the Crown. Put this on my Hellhound, does a little AoE, it reduces enemy elements resistance, and boosts elemental damage for pets. So your skeletons are getting, as you can see, a very substantial amount of elemental damage in Greece. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I took nothing on that side. And then to kind of counter the Dying God, Hungering Void, I did take three points into Giant's Blood. So that's how we kind of counter that, and we keep the health regeneration 
uh, pretty consistent. Obviously, it's a chance to proc when you're hit, but you know this will help with survivability. So that's what I did with devotion. So for items, I'm going to skim over them really quick. If you guys have any questions over the items, okay. So this is why I'm using this item here. A lot of the green items, if you pay attention, can roll stuff like this. So this gives my pets damage and bleed resistance. That's how I'm kind of boosting my pet bleed resist. And I even have a helmet over here that gives my pets even more bleed resistance. So if I'm in an area where there's a lot of bleed damage, I'll put both of these on. And that helps immensely with your skeletons not being slaughtered. So keep that in mind. I'm kind of going to just skim it over. So this isn't bad either. Bismuth's Domination. When I get hit, 100% chance when I'm hit to proc this effect. It gives my pets, again, average chaos damage. So that scales well with the Hellhound. Obviously boosting average damage for your party in chaos. And then a 200% all damage, 60% total speed. Um, this is something that I crafted way back in the day for my Conjurer, and it was laying around, so I'm using it. And then you have a physical damage, all damage, bleed, total speed from that. Just skimming over everything. These gloves, personally, I think the proc chance for these should work with pets, or it should be a chance on attack to summon these additional ghosts or spirits. That's a huge complaint of mine. These gloves could potentially be much better for a Necromancer if they were redesigned and worked a little differently. Hopefully Create will do it. I don't know. Mythical Fiend, uh, Mythical Fiend Flesh Mantle is really good. This helps you and your pet survive immensely. This is one thing that makes me not die <laughs> quite a bit. Shield's really good. Two Wild Pack Emeralds for the Pierce Acid Resist. Overall, really good rings, to be honest. You don't, you're not getting the Primal Bond boost which is unfortunate, but they provide a lot of well-needed resistances that are hard to stack. Um, and then Sovereign Ruby Domination. All right, so that's everything as far as items go, skills, and devotion. So let's get into, um, let's just go out here and start fighting some stuff. Where do we want to go? I guess uh, we can just run down over here. So like I was saying, you want to keep the let it drink up all the time. So okay, so here's all right. So here's this is what I was talking about earlier. You see this? Your skeleton pets do a vitality aura, and then if you do curse of frailty on them as well, you can see what kind of damage that flame torn's doing. Look at that. I mean, it's critting for like 14 to 17k, <laughs> sometimes 12k. But I mean, that's just the flame torn alone, and your your skeletons can spam that. So that's what's insane about this build. That's something that the Conjurer cannot do, really. I mean, technically, it could do, but not as effectively, because the Skeletons have that aura. Alright, so if you pop everything, and have your pets go to town, there you go. Everything died, like, instantly. <laughs> and that does include the uh, potions here. Wraths of the Beast. You can use those. You get those from the Rorari. However the hell you pronounce that. But yeah, I mean... It's a really good potion for pets. As you can see, it gives your pets 100% all damage, 100% crit damage. Really good. But that's what's that's what's strong about this build. Those skeletons are super strong. And anything that gets near them is going to be taking that flame torrent damage, which is consistent, repeatable spam damage. And with all the average damage added up, like I was saying earlier with the bonus elemental and chaos, that's what makes this build so strong. But, you have to be careful with this build. If you get caught out, if you position wrong, so here's that soul link there. You can see it for a second. That dude died pretty quick. <laughs> Not soul link, what is it actually called? It's uh, Mark of Torment. See, I just ran into like three or four bombs there, and my Fiend Flesh Mantles just absorbed all of that damage. I have Blight Fiend there, I'm just doing some work. ZOE Poison Novus. Okay, there's a rare name there. So here, I'll pop with my... There you go. Look at that. I popped him with my Hellhound and hit him with the Doom Bolt. And it just shredded his HP and he just dropped. So, there you have it, guys. The damage potential of this build is really good. It's not bad at all. Again... The skeletons can die very easily. In fact, you can see I only have seven skeletons out of eight. I mean, they can they can be wiped out pretty easy. But overall, really cool build. A little bit more micromanaging. you got to pay attention, not get yourself killed. But if you can do those things, it's not bad. 
it's a lot of fun. So in the future, I'll probably do a Conjurer guy and a build video on my Conjurer at level 100 and discuss what I like about him. As always, guys, thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. If you have any questions or you need any help at all, please leave them in the comments below. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.